Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the official ARC podcast here with number 372. My name is Coach MT, and I'm here live today with the core team, your host for tonight, as always, the one and only Mr. Atlas. The floor is all yours, sir. Thanks for the introduction, Coach Mistletoad, and folks, welcome back to another edition of the ARC Daily Podcast, Tuesday, November 7th. Boy, did we have a great time here yesterday. We had Coach Roberto take us through a very relaxing but powerful breathing session. Boy, it was it was absolute fire. We did that before the recording of yesterday's podcast. We didn't get to do it last Monday, as we always do it on Mondays, but last Monday we didn't get to have him. We were here. He was here as well, but we were focusing on the LSA pumping the price of ARC to 10 cents, making all the people happy, the children, everybody was ecstatic, applauding, bullish. <laughs> Smiles all around. And there's a lot of smiling happening as the folks that are taking the time to find out what the direction that we're going in is what we've built to date, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the attention to detail, the focus. And uh, listen, everybody's getting their chance. You don't hear anyone going around crying. They didn't get their chance to take advantage of the 10 cent ARC5 token price to get into the LSA and stack up and get those NFTs. No crying. Just a lot of happy people going very well today we had the the honor and the pleasure of training mr coach mistletoad he's going to be managing the back end and the front end and the customer service of making sure that everyone that comes here to the arc to use these products and specifically the Terra card which has a light kyc process we need to ensure that before we send the documentation over to the bank that we verify that everything is in order. I mean, we had one guy, not gonna name any names, we never would never do that, but somebody, instead of sending a utility bill or, or an ID, they actually sent us their, a picture of their credit card. Mistakes, or just didn't read the instructions. So before we waste the, the bank's time, and waste a couple of days while the bank reviews the KYC, what we're doing to be effective, quick, fast, like a cobra in the grass, ready to strike, is to make sure first that the documentation is all in order, then we submit it to the bank, get the approval, it's wiped off all of our databases, and the customer's able to, to go ahead and pay for the card, receive their card, and start living their best life. So, Coach MT being an integral part here. And ideally, folks, as we grow the system, we're going to need more Coach MTs. We're going to need more tech support, more customer support folks to help us in the back end, to help us in the front end, answer all the questions, do one-on-ones if, if people are confused or they don't understand. So, um, great to have him on board. Alex has been the person that's been handling all of the KYC, he's so busy building stuff that we've, we've, you know, gotten to a point where the system is built out enough that he's in the position to hand it over to the mistletoe, who's going to leapfrog the whole system. I think we're going to see a, a big improvement in the approvals, in the amount of time, because the man is definitely on the rise, very focused. Let's go. Thank, Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Thank Thank you. I'm, I'm looking, looking forward, forward to it. I'm, I'm looking and, forward. Uh, Alex even built out a little notification panel already sent to my email. So anytime anyone submits a KYC, I'm going to get notified right away, review those documents and send them over like light speed. Let's go. And shout out to Alex. Oh yeah. Alex is the man, man. 
he's been doing an amazing job. But uh, when it comes to being on top of the ball, Coach MT. Nobody, nobody, nobody does it better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. In quite some time. <laughs> so happy days. Happy days ahead here. We're looking to expand. We're looking to grow. But we need to have a foundation. So, so the next person that's going to be trained will actually be trained by Coach MT himself. So uh, that's going to be, I think, a, a great experience for that oh, lucky yes. person that's going to. I'm looking forward to. It. I love it's training fun. people. I used to train people for a living for a while, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Hey, uh, you know, sometimes training animals can be fun too, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is really, you know, those border collies, man, those dogs are so smart. Some of the things those dogs are able to do, sheesh. So, um, yeah, more folks going to be coming, but it's that time for the daily updates from Mr. Brett Nordine. Looking forward to, to hearing from him. Hope you're doing well, my friend. I'm doing great. Can you hear me okay? A little bit low, but we do hear you. Let's see. There we are. Okay. Let's see. My signal is perfect, so I'm just wondering. Signal seems to be fine. It's more, I think, of a, you sound a bit far away from the device or just a... Okay. I'll just... There, I'll just there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Perfect. I got one. My... Yeah, we had a great day today. Uh, as you mentioned, um, Alex handing off to Missile Code and also keeping the work going on the Legacy NFT contract and the DApp. Um, so those are still underway. Uh, we had some questions about um, the rate at which the LSA is moving. I think is perfect. I think we're at 42,000 left in the LSA balance. So we've got a week or so at this rate. Um, but you know, who knows? Uh, people have been stacking and they're going to see that last little bit or drop left in the LSA in the last you know 20,000, 10,000 go faster possibly. Um, but I think it's giving people a great chance, like you mentioned, um, to utilize their vault to still keep their CWR compound withdrawal schedule and take advantage and be able to stack as many, you know, arcs into the LSA as possible uh, at the 10 cent price. So yeah, happy minting everybody and um, let's uh, let's uh, utilize and leverage what we still have in the vault and get as much out as we possibly as much value in, into the, uh, the migration here. Um, the, uh, the privacy products, we had a great meeting today. There's a lot just going on in general um, with that, I would say. Um, we're now just in the thick, like right in the middle of all of the development activity. So we have so many uh, different things firing at once. Um, you know, everything from con contract signing agreements, uh, uh, to, you know, development work. Um, we mentioned last week the changes that we were able to make to zero knowledge to maintain that throughout the system while still making it super user friendly. So we're excited about that, but that does take some implementation time and uh, checking all of the different areas of the application where that touches and might, you know, make it a, a change, uh, including how the user registers um, with their path key and then how we maintain that during the, uh, uh, the sign-in process uh, because only the user will be able to see their data. We're not able to touch their data. We can't see their data. Uh, so uh, if you are going to use uh, the system, keep in mind if it's, um, you know, you don't have the key, you can't see the data and you get to lose the data. You have to start a new account. Um, and that's just comes with security. You know, there are some trade-offs with having the highest possible security with zero knowledge protection. But the downside is that you have to maintain that key. So just like you have your crypto keys today for your wallets, you're going to want to write that down in two different places at least and store that somewhere safe. Um, or make the passphrase something that you can remember, Sim you know, simple and easy. Um, it can be a string of words, characters, um, things that, uh, you know, will, will strike um, your memory so that uh, when you're logging in, you'll remember that. And uh, But then also storing it in a place for you can get access to it if needed, but then also maybe it's with an attorney or with a family member that you trust in their vaults or somewhere. So there's redundancy. Um, so if there's a fire in your house and you had it written down on a piece of paper, it doesn't get lost. Uh, things like that. Um, basic kind of um, 
you know, uh, how to manage your keys for crypto. It's going to be how you want to manage your key for our privacy product. Um, but with that comes, you know, the ultimate protection, uh, both for the end user and also for us as a uh, you know, company helping getting people into the application. We don't have the keys, so we can't provide any data, any authorities. They do knock on our door, provide a subpoena or some kind of court order. Uh, we can go ahead and, you know, kindly give them the data. It'll be fully encrypted, sharded. They, they won't be able to use it in any way, shape or form unless the user gives up the keys. So very important. Um, so not only are we providing the end-to-end -end, end -end encryption uh, via zero knowledge, the decentralized storage, the sharding, all of that. Um, you know, we're also protecting uh, us so that uh, you know we can't be shut down for not following a court order or something. And uh, we also are moving forward with uh, the uh, corporate entity, and uh, we will be looking at Switzerland. We mentioned that they have the most sophisticated privacy laws and and independence really from other shenanigans that are going on with other countries that seem to want to restrict a lot of things. Um, so we're keeping an eye on all of that and encryption laws and things like that. But um, overall with decentralization, zero knowledge, uh, I think everybody from the end user to these, um, to these entities that are setting up these uh, corporations to be able to manage applications like this, uh, I think we're all better off and better protected and uh, can you know, work through this kind of regulatory period where we see this shakeup happening in terms of privacy laws and uh, excuses being used for you know, taking away our freedoms and our privacy. So um, we're definitely on the bleeding edge of all of that and using that as much as we can in our marketing and our messaging about the use case for our product. Um, other than that, we also did make a kind of an executive decision to add a calendar to the email and the overall application. So that'll be integrated into your email, much like you might have for Google Mail, Outlook. Um, we just felt like it was a must have prior to launch. Uh, we were planning to launch with without it and then add it later, but it felt just like the right thing to do in terms of rounding out the entire application and make, making it all in one solution that you know, splashes on the market and gets faster adoption rates. Uh, we're also looking at uh, quickly following the launch, having some roadmap items like um, additional languages added to the email platform, uh, your contact integration. So if you have a contact uh, on your phone or another device, you can import those. So um, those are some of the things that are coming down the line, making it you know full featured uh, head to head with a lot of the other, uh, what I'd say competitive uh, products on the market in terms of email and just how you manage your calendar, your everyday you know, tasks and, and everyday life. Um, whether you're a business or an individual, you're using these products every day, and we want to make sure that we at least have the, you know, the base uh, features that are uh, going to give us, you know, the uh, an entrance into the marketplace for somebody that might be using a free email, email service or a free VPN or something like that. Um, they're going to come over. They're going to see a suite of products. This covers all your bases uh, and uh, gives a lot of value uh, for the money. So. That's kind of where we're at with the uh, privacy suite uh, next week. I, we're going to push out the the next demo and the next sprint ending. Uh, we talked to the team today, and we're going to push that out one week to allow these tweaks to the zero knowledge to be able to be put into the user flow so that we can see them all in action, how it's going to work to make sure that that's kind of put to bed um, um, from a back end perspective and front end and design perspective. Um, and so I, I asked the team to push that out a week so we can see this all in action to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page and we have a solution that, that fits both the uh, integrity of the zero knowledge uh, system as well as the user flow so that it's fast, easy for someone to understand and also to onboard and, and get into the system. Also give people fair warning that you know, not your keys, not your data. You have to protect that passphrase that you put into the system because that is your encryption code, and without it, you can't decrypt your data through your email system, your calendar. It's all going to be covered by the zero knowledge, as well as the decentralized uh, cloud storage. Um, so that's about it for me. Uh, anything else, Atlas, you want to touch on the business side of things? No, sir. That's a great update and a great addition to have the calendar. We don't want to shortchange any, anyone. We're, we're able to offer a complete holistic solution. 
So there's there's nothing lacking that they're getting anywhere else that they can't get here. So they have only so much more to to gain by by being within our ecosystem and having access to all these great decentralized zero knowledge protection and encryption solutions. So fantastic. Really happy that we're moving in that direction. So nobody will be able to look over here and say, oh, well, but, but, you know, there's always those, those yeah. tires, right? <laughs> to show yeah. up, kicking the tires. Well, you're, 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 you don't have that. Well, well, I'm sorry, little James. We, we, we have that. And then some. Sit down. You're needing too much of that gaba, gaba gula stuff. It's making your, your brain swell. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. And we're, you know, we're all constantly researching and, and finding ways that we can improve things, add on. We'll have a full roadmap for the implementation of new features, you know, within the first uh, quarter, you know, of launch. But we know there's going to be, um, there's going to be bug fixes, there's going to be, you know, user confusion that happens in the UI flow. And so we want to get those things ironed out with the first release and then uh, add the calendar, or sorry, add the calendar, but add the, uh, the language as I mentioned, and the contact integration and these little things, um, you know, quickly after the launch so that we can kind of do a push, a new version that comes out with the, all the bug fixes, kind of user tweaks that we learn and grow with in the first month or two. And then we'll have another version that pops out and uh, that one will be even more full featured. So yeah, constant improvement, um, constant development, and uh, always keeping pace with what the new tech is, um, what trends are happening in the marketplace, and and overcoming, you know, what what we don't see now as far as obstacles in this way for encryption potentially or anything related to privacy, uh, any kind of regulatory act. So committed and we're focused on this and what we've got coming with ArcNet potentially is going to be amazing the way this all ties together. So we're pumped. I'm pretty sure it's going to be well received by so many folks, political leaders, reporters, whistleblowers, industry, folks that value their, their data, their information, when they're uh, sending over the, the files, the blueprints to uh, the manufacturer, they want to make sure that those files are not going to be hurt with a man in the middle situation, be clipped. So there's a shortage of, of folks, professional, amateur and and uh, folks that are just wanting to to feel comfortable understanding that their conversations that their internet connections that the way they transact also is secure looking forward to that and I, I do have an announcement one of our our very very own one of our what we call the pillars of the community one of our great leaders here mr. Donatello he has uh, just released a new book. Let's all give him a, a, a big round of applause. Sheesh. Let's go. I believe that uh, Coach MT is going to post a link here. Please do go check it out. It's called The Crypto Quest From Skeptic to Believer A True Story by Donatello. Uh, do, do you want to? Um, Read the preface there for us, Coach MT. Nobody does it as well as you. Let's see if you. Yes, sir. Okay. There we go. I'll turn it over to you. Exciting new. Hey there, crypto enthusiasts and adventure seekers. My brand new book, Crypto Quest From Skeptic to Believer A True Story, is now available on Amazon. Let's go. Get ready for a gripping journey into the world of cryptocurrency with Crypto Quest. This book, this book takes you on a thrilling ride through the ups and downs of the crypto world as I evolved from a skeptic into a passionate believer. Imagine starting the adventure on a sunny day in 2019 with a chance, with a chance encounter that sets the stage for an epic exploration of cryptocurrencies. With curiosity and skepticism in tow, I dive headfirst in the world of Bitcoin and blockchain tech, unra unraveling mysteries and discovering the road to financial freedom. Whether you're a crypto pro or just getting started, this book offers an honest and relatable narrative that resonates with everyone. It's a fascinating story of missed opportunities, exciting discoveries, and valuable lessons learned along the way. 
CryptoQuest will inspire you and still hope and motivate you to embark on your crypto journey with the newfound belief in the power of digital assets. Let's go. Go grab your copy on Amazon today and let's kickstart this extraordinary adventure together. Let's go. Sheesh. Hey, you got me pumped there, man. He's here. Buy it. I don't know. I don't know if he, he's able to mute the mic. He might be at work. No, he's a, he's a busy man. Uh, but if he is able to say hello, uh, we would love to uh, hear from him. Let's give him uh, 10 seconds to see if he's able to pop on in. He might just be unable to do so. That's good. Man, we're, we're excited. We're happy. We're proud. Yeah. This crypto, um, and this, this crypto quest. Yeah. <laughs> Let's it was, go. It, it was, to me, it was kind of a, a, a exciting ride because, you know, I got to kind of dig up some old weeds and, mm-hmm. and go back and get a visual of where it all started for me. So, um, so that's kind of the, what's in the book. Um, of course, it's, when I wrote it, it's, it's more, I, I put details, but I didn't go so too much in depth because it had been a, a longer book and I didn't want it to be too long because I know a lot of people don't like reading thick, long books. Um, so I might, I might just do a brand. You didn't use like the real names of the people because they might end up going to jail. <laughs> All those no, ruggers. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> I didn't. Um, the guy that introduced me, I called him Bob. So, Bob. And uh, yeah, so I just made a name up, Bob. But uh, but if he read it, he'll he'll know kind of the whole aspect of it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's that. It to me, it was one probably it was it was better than the last one I wrote because you know it's my story. That was the guide. That was the beginner's guide to crypto, yeah. kind of like the beginner's guide to to space travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but this one is my story, my real life story. Cool. Um, there's no fluff in it. It's, it's real deal, real life. Me, where I come, where I started, and kind of where I, a little bit about where I'm at now, type deal. Nice man. Yeah. Well, we uh, will definitely uh, promote it. Look, you you've been such a a blessing to us, somebody who's taken the time, done a due diligence, advised us, uh, have been flying the flag and, and just kept your faith in supporting us. And I think we've shown you too that anything that, that you do or, or any of your, our community members do, we support you fully in your endeavors, in your dreams. There's a common denominator that unites us all. We are in this space to, to grow as investors, as human beings, to better ourselves. And we know that every single person here has dreams. They have their goals. And if we can be a part of, you know, helping you to create the, the revenue so you can achieve that, or whether that's bringing eyes, bringing folks, exposing what you're, what you're doing and help to, to impulse you, to push you forward in any way, brother, sisters, that's what we're here to do. We are a family. We are a community. We are the ARC. Sheesh. Let's get this crypto. Thank you, brother. What? Yeah. Let's, let's get, get this crypto. crypto. Oh, God damn. Oh, yeah. Let's get this crypto. So, folks, please do make sure to go check out his latest drop. I think this is a very interesting angle. You know, the the story walking in his shoes from his perspective, uh, I think that's that's a, another great addition. Great way to start it with the, the beginner's guide and now the true story. Hey, it might even be made into a movie one day. Why not? Well, folks, we're going to move on over to the Q&A session here for Tuesday. We want to thank everybody for being here at 2 p.m. EST, 7 p.m. UTC. We're going to be back tomorrow, same time, and we'll see you all then.